what's going on guys, Super Savage uh, 789 here, bringing you guys a video. Today we're doing Wild Kakashi as the 5th Okage. In this timeline, when Jiraiya is getting told he needs to become the 5th Okage, he doesn't immediately think of Tsunade. Instead, he thinks of the copy wheel ninja Kakashi. Naturally, Koharu and Hamura deny this as he's too weak, but Jiraiya thinks fast. Think about it. Jiraiya trained Minato, and Minato trained Kakashi. He also made Jonin at a ridiculously young age, and has the darkness in his heart to enact things like assassinations, and call the right call even when it's a total grey area. They'd think this would make a lot of sense, and tell Jiraiya to go get him, but when he finds him, Kakashi has been knocked unconscious by Itachi, and the only person who can heal that is, would you know it, Tsunade. So Jiraiya decides to go on a trip to find her, and takes Naruto with him. From here, the Tsunade retrieval arc goes like canon, however, the primary objective has been shifted from Tsunade being Hokage to her returning to the Leaf. Tsunade heals Sasuke and Kakashi, with the latter of which being immediately met by Koharu and Homura. They begin to interrogate Kakashi, who is desperately trying to get out of the position. He tried to leave, but Tsunade and Jiraiya both stand there, bloodlust radiating off them as they refuse to let Kakashi go. Reluctantly, he agrees. Meanwhile, on the roof, Naruto and Sasuke have their fight, where Jiraiya has to throw them into water tanks. He doesn't give Sasuke a pep talk, leading to him even more annoyed. He'd still meet with Sakura, and then leave the village with the sound fall. When Kakashi gets the report that Sasuke has gone to Orochimaru, he would be devastated. How could he let this happen? He finally becomes Sokage, and now the universe is punishing for it. He takes off out of his office, hot on the trail of Sasuke and the sound fall. Eventually, he'd catch up through the help of his ninja hounds. Using his Sharingan, he determined that Sasuke is being held in the basket, which Sakon uploads him on. Unfortunately, if he opens it too early, Sasuke will perish. Kakashi then chuckles that we'll just have to kill them all before that happens. The fight would be extremely uphill for Kakashi to handle. When one of the Sound 4 members falter, the other three have enough experience to cover them. It would be fun watching Kakashi have to use everything in his arsenal to avoid their attacks, but it would be hard for him to do so. I could see Kakashi being able to kill Jirobo as well as Sakon and Ukon, but Kitamaru and Tayuya would be too difficult for his moveset. Meanwhile, Sakura would rush to Naruto's home and tells him about what's happening. Hearing that Kakashi and Sasuke have now both left the village, Naruto immediately rushes off to go and stop his best friend. Probably in his pajamas. I'll leave that up to you guys. Naruto and Kimimaru arrive on the scene at the same time. The bone ninja takes Sasuke very quickly, and so Kakashi orders Naruto to go and stop him. He nods and rushes away. As Kakashi's body begins to get more and more fatigued, he begins to give up. That's until a team of elite Anbu Ninja and Mike Guy arrive to give the Hokage the backup he desperately needs. He tells him to stop Tayuru and Kitamaru as he rushes off to go and back up Naruto. And I don't need to tell you that Mike Guy and the Anbu clean up shop. They don't kill Kitamaru or Tayuru, however, but they instead take them back for interrogation. Kakashi catches up to Naruto and Kimimaru, battling, and tells Naruto to go and get Sasuke. He nods and rushes away as Kakashi wins battle with Kimimaru. Both the stamina will be depleting rapidly for very different reasons, so it's a battle of who can last the longest. Using his Sharingan, Kakashi can see the chakra where Kimimaru's bones are about to surface. Combine that with the Sharingan reaction time, leading to Kakashi being able to dodge most of Kimimaru's attacks. When spotting that Kimimaru's stamina is weakening rapidly, Kakashi remembers back to Jirobo and performs the Earth Dome that he had. It surrounds Kimimaru and begins to sap away his chakra. Knowing this won't be enough, Kakashi makes a bigger earth dome, and then a bigger one, and then another one after that. Kakashi waits in anticipation to see if his opponent is dead, but he can hear the faint cry of what appears to be a jutsu. Instinctively, he leaps into the air as a bunch of bones sprout out of the ground, destroying the domes. Second stage Kimimaru stands there momentarily before vanishing into his bones. Kakashi uses his Sharingan to track Kimimaru in the bones, but notices him stop. He destroys that bow and reveals Kimimaru's dead body lying there, clearly dying from an illness. The rest of the arc then plays out like normal. In the time skip, Kakashi trains himself to make sure a tragedy like this doesn't happen again. It's also tried and achieves strength like the fourth previous Hokage had under their belts. He gets a better hold of his Sharingan and Mangekyo, leading him to being able to hold it and use it like he had in the war arc. He also creates purple lightning much easier to cut down on the chakra the Raikiri uses. Over with the Anbu, they interrogated the sound four members that they captured, and after a while they managed to figure out Orochimaru's secrets. Stuff like where his hidden bases are located, and the different experiments he had performed on both them and the others. With basic knowledge on how the curse mark works, Kakashi would create a modified version of the seal, used to seal the curse mark away. This would work towards helping to stop it working. 
He then teaches it to the Anbu, and then he sends him to investigate Orochimaru's letters. Tsunade would remain on the leaf, and would still take Sakura under her wing. Since she is in Hokage, she doesn't have as much responsibilities, so she'd do a lot more gambling and binge drinking in her free time, which annoys Sakura so much that he forces Tsunade to cut down. I can see Sakura being a bit stronger, but not by any noticeable amount. When Naruto and Jirai return from their training trip, they are called to the Hokage's office alongside Sakura. Since Kakashi is a Hokage, he won't be able to lead Teen 7, so he has to assign a new leader, being that of Yamato. To understand Yamato's strength and to build team morale, the bell test will occur with Yamato and not Kakashi. During the bell test, it'd be quite interesting to watch with Yamato using wood release to apprehend them. Sakura would actually be more useful than Naruto during this, since her punches can break lots of his wood at a time and let Naruto get close to the bells. The way they'd get the bells in this timeline would be by Sakura and Naruto arguing during the fight, distracting Yamato and leaving his guard down. Sakura then punches Naruto at Yamato, who grabs the bells and lets them win. Naturally, like in canon, Gaara is captured and Team 7 is sent to Sunogakure to help out. Sakura heals Konkuro and pick up Chiyo where they move to catch Gaara. This all goes the same, however Yamato is there instead of Kakashi. Same goes for the Tenji Bridge, since Kakashi didn't contribute to that. I also think the Kakuzu arc goes the same, since Kakashi would find Team 7 leaving the village and goes with them. He'd just be more stronger, so helping out would be much better. When Jiraiya goes to the Rain Village, I think Tsunade could convince him to let her tag along as well. Having some backup is better than not. Jiraiya would begrudgingly agree, and the duo sneak into Amigakure. They encountered Conan, and then the Animal Path, Praetor Path, and Naraka Path. Tsunade would tell Jiraiya that she would buy some time him to enter Sage Mode, which she agrees to. She activates her Byakugo seal and begin rushing around, coming into contact with the Animal Path and its summonings. Using her raw strength, she manages to dispel one or two before getting close to the Animal Path itself. The Prayer Path absorbed the chakra out of her fist, making her punch just, you know, punch pain regularly. Before she is skewered by Chakra Rod, though, Jiraiya arrives and saves her on his toad. Tsunade would summon Katsuyu so she can have her own animal summoning, and the duo begins to battle pain. While Jiraiya is able to destroy the animal path, Tsunade is able to get close and destroy the Naraka path. The other pains and jump the duo, blowing off Jiraiya's arm. But Tsunade and Jiraiya meet a skewered fate, and are both thrown in the water. However, as Jiraiya dies, he realizes that Katsuyu chunks are on his body. He then reverse summoned to Shikotsu Forest to be healed, leaving Tsunade to drown alone and die. When Naruto gets back to Leaf, Shizune and Fukasaku wait at the Hokage's office for everyone to return. They explain how Tsunade died in battle, but with her dying moment, she managed to get Jiraiya to safety and slowly heal him. He's in critical condition, so they don't know if he'll pull through. This hurts Sakura the most, so Naruto has to console her. He would then head to Miyoboku to train under Sage Mode. During Pain's invasion, Kakashi won't have his typical fight of Pain since he'd be on the Hokage Tower. It means that both Choji and Choza likely perish against Tendo and Ashura. It's upsetting, but hey, that's how it goes. I don't think Jiraiya would be in a suitable condition to help, but he can give information to Kakashi, so he can form a plan. Naruto would still return, and then fights Pain, leading to the same results as in canon. And that's when we be here, if you like and subscribe, and comment below, subscribe in the next part. Do you think it will be positive or negative? And what do you think will happen at the Fire Kage Summit? Let me know, and uh, yeah, bye!